This one is problem 1.17. A truss structure is given with applied forces and we need to find out forces in all the truss members. So to start with, we look at the supports in this problem. In this one right here, looks like a fixed support. This will have two reactions, one in x direction and one in the y direction. This one is a roller support. So this is going to have only reaction in the y direction. Now to start, we can do the global force and movement balance and with that we can figure out these reactions. So if I do the force balance in the x direction, there is only one force which is Rax which has to be equals to 0. In the y direction we have Ray going up, Rby going up, minus 75 going down and minus 50 going down equals to 0. That's the second equation. And third one is going to be a moment equation. So let's take moment about point A. So the first moment that will be because of 75 kilonewtons. The moment arm for this force is going to be 2 meters. And the moment about A, the 75 will try to rotate this in the clockwise direction. That's why positive. Similarly, 50 kilonewton will have a moment arm of 3. Which is this. Again clockwise. And RBY here will have an anti-clockwise moment with a moment arm of so this equals to 0. So this is clear cut, Rx is equals to 0. From the third equation, we can solve for Rby and Rby comes to be 75 kilonewtons. And if you plug back the value of Rby in second equation, your Ray comes to be 50 kilonewtons. So now the next step is to analyze each one of these joints here and try to figure out the <coughs> member forces. So the way we start these problems is we look at how many unknowns are there at each joint and then we analyze that joint first which has less number of unknowns. And since we have only two equations, one in uh, x direction and one in y direction for force balance, we would be able to solve a point for the unknown forces only if there are two unknowns at that point. So for example, if you notice this point A, this point A here is going to have a force going this way and force going this way. Mm. So I'm naming this as FAC and this one as FAD. So since we have already solved RAX, RAY is also known. So at joint A, there are two unknowns which is FAC and FAD. So that means if I draw the free boy diagram of joint A, I would be able to solve for these two unknowns. And whenever we are drawing these truss member forces, we always draw them away from the joint assuming that these joints are under tension. So if I draw joint A free boy diagram, I have a force going this way which is Ray, I have a force here which is Rax and since it is zero so there is no need to draw that. Then we have FAC, then we have FAD here. Now for this angle here, if you notice from A to D the distance is 2 meters and D to F distance is 2 meters. That's why this angle right here is going to be 45 degrees. So if I write the X force balance equation and Y force balance equation, your X force balance is going to give you FAC cos 45 degrees plus FAD equals to 0. And your Y force balance equation is going to give you FAC sine 45 degrees plus Ray equals to 0. So from in these two equations, since Ray is known to you, first you can solve for FAC from the second equation and FAC comes out to be minus 50 square root 2 kilonewtons and plugging back the value of FAC in the first equation, you can get the value of FAD as 50 kilonewtons. That means this member is now known, this member force is also known. Now similarly, now if you go to joint B, I can draw a free boy diagram at joint B. The forces here are going to be RBY, which is a reaction force. Away from point B, there will be a member force which is FBE. And on this side here is going to be FBD. Again, this angle right here is going to be 45 degrees. So in this case also, we are going to do X force balance and Y force balance. Now, X force balance equation in this case is going to be minus FBE cos 45 degrees minus FBD 
equals to 0 and y fourth balance is going to be fbe sine 45 degrees plus rby equals to 0. Now rby is known so from the second equation we can calculate the value of fbe that comes out to be 75 square root 2 kilonewtons and plugging back fbe in the first equation we get the value of fbd equals to 75 kilonewtons. The next joint that we will analyze is joint C. If I draw the free boy diagram at joint C, I will have a force FCF here, FAC in there and FCD this way. Now in terms of angles, this one we have already seen, this is 45 degrees. This is also 45 degrees because this side and this side is same. Now since this height is 1 meter because of this 45 degrees this height is also 1 meter so this angle is 45 this angle is 45 this angle is 45 so in the figure it doesn't look like this is 90 degree but in reality this angle right here is going to be 90 degrees and if that, that angle is 95 degrees there and this is 45 here this is 45 here and this one is also 45 so now if i write equations for x force balance and y force balance here at joint c I can write FCF cos 45 degrees plus FCD cos 45 degrees minus FAC cos 45 degrees equals to 0 and the Y force balance here FCF sin 45 degrees minus FCD sin 45 degrees minus FAC sin 45 degrees equals to 0. Now in these your FAC force we have already calculated and the value of FAC is minus 50 square root 2. So this FAC is known to us. So again the unknowns in this case are going to be FCF and FCD. So there are these two equations and we can solve for these two. FCF comes out to be minus 50 square root 2 kilonewtons and FCD comes out to be 0. So now this member force is known, this is known, this one is known, this one is known, this one is known and this one is known. So the only unknown members for us now are this one right here, this one right here and this one right here. So based on this we can go to joint E and draw the free body diagram. At joint E we notice a member going this way which is F EF, a member going here which is FDE, another member going here which is FBE and a downward force of 50 kN. <coughs> and all of these angles here are 45 degrees. So now your X force balance gives us minus FEF cos 45 degrees because it's going backwards minus f d e cos 45 degrees going backwards plus f b e cos 45 degrees equals to 0 and likewise if i do y force balance i get f e f sin 45 degrees going up minus f d e sin 45 degrees going down minus f b e sin 45 degrees again going downwards and minus 50 equals to 0. So in this setup your f b e force this one right here is known to us. So again here the unknown forces are f e f and f d e and there are two equations right here. So we can sell, solve for f e f which is minus 50 square root 2 and f d e which is minus 25 square root 2 kilonewtons. So now this one is also known, this one is also known. So the last member that is pending is member d f. So now for member d f either I can analyze f or d. Now on the d there are many members there so f b d which is going to be a little difficult. So it's easier for us to draw joint f. So if I go to joint f I have this downward force which is 75 kilonewtons 
this member force right here which is FCF this is FEF and a downward force FDF now you notice I am drawing always these member forces away from the joint so now for this since our interest is in the FDF force which is in the y direction so there is no point for us to write the equation for the x force balance so directly we are going to write the y force balance it's going to be minus 75 acting downwards and all of these angles are 45 degrees so minus FCF sine 45 degrees minus FDF minus FEF sine 45 degrees equals to 0 now FCF is known to us FEF is also known to us so from this equation we can directly calculate FDF and the value of FDF comes out to be 25 kilonewtons. So these are all the member forces. This right here, and this one right here, and this one right here, and this right here. So that's the final answer.